Because, like, I was so scared to give birth. Like, yeah. all my life, I was, like, scared. That terrified me. Well, we're obviously not having sex right now. Yeah. That's changed. That's changed. <laughs> like, we're so shocked. Mm -hmm. And so, just, like, what is happening? This is not what we planned. There's a lot that goes on down there during it all. Ugh. Um, I handled it pretty well, I thought, so. Yeah, you did. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's another Sip with the Spinellas episode. We're kind of sipping today. Cass is just sipping on some water. water. That's so boring. I literally just finished my iced coffee, so I just need some water right now. We didn't plan it very well, and I'm sipping on some protein, but no free ads, so it's just generic protein. But today's episode is a fun one because I'm pretty much just interviewing Cass with your guys' questions. This is a pregnancy slash delivery slash early parenthood q a that's pretty much she doesn't know any of the questions i went through them and sorted them there's a few questions that are for me if we get to them at the end we'll tackle them but you guys aren't here for me you're here for her she's the star of this show let's get started i will say before we start there were hundreds literally hundreds of questions so i'm sorry if we couldn't get to all of them if you guys are very curious on this topic i feel like a lot of your followers are people that um, are just entering into this time of, of motherhood or maybe not even there yet. So there's a lot of people that have questions and couldn't get to them all, but I tried to pick out ones that kept repeating itself. And so let's just jump right in. First question, is there anything you wish you could go back and tell yourself pre-pregnancy? Hmm. That's a good question. Maybe that labor isn't as scary. Because like, I was so scared to give birth. Like all my life, I was like, scared that terrified me but once you're actually doing it it's like whatever yeah like it is scary but you're like what else am i supposed to do well like once you're in that spot it's like just get baby out yeah and like at that point i was just like pop in get them out and i said in a q a on my channel like honestly the whole period of pregnancy for me was harder than like the 24 hours of labor and birth right. well and just to be clear she did get an epidural so i'm sure yeah that it had helped out with yeah. that um, and the labor was like, I feel like a very smooth and like easy. I didn't feel like there like there weren't any complications or anything. So oh, yeah, I would. Let's just, yeah, let's just clarify that she's not saying pregnancy or delivery is not hard. So people might yeah. go in the comments like you can say you can't well, say just like through here to like be every person, and every person's situation is different. Yeah, but for you, but for me, labor. Well, I don't need to stress about that. Much. So you would have told yep. yourself. Don't stress about it. It's all going to be okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Second question. Has our relationship, this came up a bunch. Everyone wanted to know about our relationship. How's our relationship with each other struggled um, since having a baby? And what are some things that have changed about our relationship? Uh, I don't think we struggled. I feel like, I mean, we weren't really in fights anyways, but I don't, like, we haven't really gotten into arguments or anything. I just feel like we're good at communicating and saying, like, this is what I need right now. I would say that's probably our greatest strength in our marriage is like yeah. communication, which is huge. Like, what are some things that have changed? Oh. Um, well, we're obviously not having sex right now. Yeah. That's changed. That's changed. A lot of people were asking about sex, too. It hasn't been six weeks yet. Six weeks yet. No, it hasn't been six weeks. Don't let mine me non-existent. I think that once um, I am clear to, like, go to the gym and stuff, then things will kind of change because I think then we'll get more into a routine of, like, this is when I work out, this is when you work out. Yeah. Do you if they're in like work at different times? Yeah, we're right now. It's like you can kind of go to the gym whenever because I'm not going anywhere anyways. But I feel like then it will kind of change. But right now, I think the honestly, I think only like the main thing is we're just a lot more tired. So maybe a little bit yeah. it could be quicker to be irritable. But we've like we just both are like trying. No, to I think a lot of times you're like, are you okay? Are you mad at me? And I'm like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Like I'm yeah. mad at you. I'm yeah. so exhausted. No. Or like I'm starving. But that's where the communication comes in. Because yeah. a lot of people would be like, they'd see maybe a like a blank look on their face, but like they're mad at me and then they would like say something. But I'm like, Are you okay? Like, do you need anything from me? Um other than that, I mean obviously our alone time, like we don't have any alone time really. Yeah. At this point. Well, and I feel like I don't like see you as much because yeah. if I'm doing something, it's like we're usually not together. Yeah. And we're still that's the baby. There's still a lot of stuff that's been going on at the house, like all good stuff, but just finishing up touches and so I've been busy yeah. with that stuff. So I feel like once this fall happens, stuff how stuff comes down, baby gets more into a routine as far as going to bed earlier, because you know with their newborns, they don't really go to bed at that early yeah. uh, but later. We'll get some of that time back. Yeah. All right. For you, what has been the hardest part of parenting so far? I don't know. It's hard to like parent a newborn. Yeah. You're not, we're not thing like he doesn't know. 
that we're even in. Where we're like disciplining you, right? But I don't know. I think for me, it's like understanding like why he's crying. Yeah. That's the biggest thing right yeah. now. Like when he's crying, you're like, okay, you've been fed. Your diaper's. Right. Your beeper. Tried like, to what figure, is going figure them out. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of like understanding each other. Right. Um, I feel like that's the hardest thing. Right yeah. I feel like you, you said today that like you, you think you're starting to figure them out, which is like pretty cool. Yeah. I think that now. Yeah, we're getting into, it's like when he's crying, I kind of like, okay, I know what's wrong with yeah. you right now. But sometimes, like earlier when he was crying and you were at the gym, yeah. I was literally, I texted him, I was like, I don't know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I wouldn't say there's, we're really parenting right now, we're just like yeah. keeping a baby alive. alive. <laughs> so, yeah, ask us maybe in like a year or so. Yeah. But right now, it's just making sure that this house is sane and that he's fed and changed and slept and that we're taking care of ourselves but yeah other than that there's not too much parenting going yeah. on right now it'll be interesting though like when he can talk it yeah. was like doing things like how like we will like act misbehaves or like right. stuff like that like you can't get mad at the baby or no or like discipline the baby yeah there's not too much parenting no also it looks like i'm not wearing pants i am definitely wearing shorts i just wanted to say that look i look naked on camera <laughs> uh what are some baby items you haven't been able to live without Oh, that's a good one. Binkies. He loves his binky. There's like one specific one that he loves more than the other. And we have like 30. Yeah, that's great. But he loves this one. And we only have one of it. For claws, I feel like we go through those so quick. Brooks, wash Brooks is a vomiter. That's for you. Yeah, he spits up a lot. I mean, if you're breastfeeding, like a nursing cover, I feel like I've gotten really good use out of that. Um, and then also the like man it's like called a manual breast pump but um it's just like a silicone thing that you like put on your other babe i was that's what i was gonna say i was just that was like your main one because like when yeah she first started breastfeeding yeah it was just coming out the other end like crazy like so. i would just be dripping all day long i feel like it's gotten, it's gotten a lot better yeah but um yeah so the first like two weeks i used that every single day definitely not a wipe warmer no, we had a white warmer and um, it almost burned down our house. I don't know what happened, but it like almost caught on fire. So that is well and gone. That's in the trial. Yeah. I would say you don't need a white warmer. I could live without that. Yeah. It's going to cry during the changes either way. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Oh, another thing that we really love is like the Snuggle Me organic. We love that he can lay in it if we're doing something. It just kind of like keeps him, I don't know, secure. And um, I know when like he gets older, he can use it to like sit up in and like. I mean, if he's, like, watching TV or I don't know, but he can, like, use it even when he gets older. Any advice on hearing horror stories? I feel like this kind of goes along with what you said in the beginning as far as what you were, like, um, you would tell yourself. But uh, any horror stories about deliveries and getting triggered, scared, something might happen to you while delivering? I feel like if I ever saw, like, any type of video that was, like, my bad birth story, I just scroll right past yeah. it. I'm like, I do not I'm here for that. No, I can't. I can't handle that. And I just kept telling myself, like, everything's going to be fine. And obviously lots of prayer. Um, but I just kind of kept trusting that everything would be fine. I kept saying, I'm not even going to tear. Like, everything's going to be great. I did end up tearing. But that's another thing that's, like, in the moment, I didn't even know that I had tore because of the epidural and stuff. So those are things that's, like, you hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, it's kind of not the end of the world. Yeah. But everybody's different. Like everyone has a different, like you can't be scared because of something that's happened to yeah. something else. Like you could take anything in the world. Something's always happened to someone that's bad. And yeah. if you live life like that, that's such a bad way to live. I can feel like if you think something bad's going to happen to you, it will happen. I mean, if you're like so scared and you're like, yeah. I'm going to tear like, so like then you probably will. I don't know. You know, like, cause you're like psyching. I would, I would just say like, obviously I would give birth. Once you're pregnant, there's nothing you can do but give birth. So you're going to have to give birth. So scared, then like maybe just do a scheduled C section that way. But I'm saying just think positively because there's nothing, there's like thinking negatively doesn't help you. Yeah. And you're going to have to give birth one way or another. Well, and I, I have seen so many videos of people like giving birth to their baby and their baby had like died and they had to like still give birth to it. And so like towards the end of my pregnancy, that was like very scary. I was like, Oh my gosh, yeah. that can happen. Like, what if that happens? And you were pregnant for this whole time and then you don't even get paid. Probably not that's a good thing to be. No, but like, I would just keep telling myself, like, that's not going to happen. Like, right. and just obviously keep praying. And you just like can't get too much in your head about it. There's a lot of things in life that you just have no control over it. Yeah. You just have to accept that. Yeah.
All right, next question. How is it being far from family while having your first baby? My fiance and I are moving across the country from our families, and this is something I worry about for when we have kids. That's a really good question. We were literally just talking about that and like yesterday or something. But I feel like when it was just us, I didn't really care to live far from family. And now it's definitely like a, it's way more obvious in our lives that we don't live yeah. close to anyone. And, like, I was talking to my friends about it and just saying, even if we want to go do something, like, yes, our friends will watch our baby if we ask them to, but that's not really their responsibility. That's more like a grandparent thing or something. So, I don't know. It's tough. It is tough. Obviously, my parents are, like, gone, too. Like, in the yeah. so, like, my parents we don't are in We don't live by any. Her mom lives in Ohio. I think, for me, it, it, it makes me sad that it upsets my mom that she can't, like, see Brooks grow up every day. And that, that hurts me, but it's like, you have to make decisions like for it's best for you in the moment. It's like, obviously we couldn't, we couldn't live in Oregon right now. So like yeah. that, there'd be no benefit in that, but it is sad for her to not be able, and for my dad not to be able to see him every day. It is tough. Like there's no, it's not, oh, it's just super easy. Like when my parents left, like that was sad. When her mom left, that was sad. Like it's, it's definitely more obvious, like you said. Yeah that we are and thankfully we have made really good community here um and they've made like the transition a lot easier like we have really good friends here and um yeah that's been really important so i don't know how it would be if we didn't then it would really be alone yeah but that would be you yeah. definitely do have some friends here that feel um like family and we know like care about us but yeah it is i mean it's a tough thing i don't know what our future holds as far as that but for right now we feel like we should be here so obviously we're far away from three now just writing that feeling is here because we want to be here but we'll see what happens yeah i would say it's doable like don't that's not you shouldn't not be moving yes yeah, so i would just live somewhere that you absolutely hate just to be close to family or something but definitely is tough just make it you just gotta make an effort we call all the time facetime send pictures i send we send pictures in my family group chat every day so they can see him progressing and um especially like with my brothers and sister they're not going to be able to see him for my sister was coming for Thanksgiving, but my brothers probably won't get to see him till March, and and that that is sad, and it's it's a bummer. Um, there are situations it is what it is. Um, how did you guys come up with the name Brooks? It is a very cute name. Oh, thank you. Um, actually, I made us talk about it, but we just both liked the name. Yeah. But we were dating. We were dating long distance, and we had this like baby name app. I don't know if we saw it on that app, but we no. got got baby names like all the time. Yeah. Just I just. Like, we've talked about it. We, like, we knew we were going to get married, from, like, right when we first started yeah. dating. So it was just a fun thing to pass time. Like, instead of, like, how was your day? Good. How was your day? And we'd be like, let's talk about baby names. Yeah. And stuff. So. Like, I literally have a note in my notes app that I've had since, like, high school that I've been putting baby names on. So I love to talk about that. So we would talk about names all the time. And, and I think, I do think we felt we realized it was my, like, first idea. Yeah, you said I wrote this name Brooks, and right. I was like, "Oh, amazing!" Because I like that name too. So you had, we could agree on like the zero name. Yeah, and you guys keep asking us like, "What would our girl name be?" We're not gonna tell you because we're, gonna... we're not done having kids. See, is that mean? we're not having kids anytime soon? No, but we're another one of kids. Yeah, any more kids? But we're not gonna tell you guys our girl's Once name. I'm done having kids. I will share my complete baby name list and say, "Take it, have it, <laughs> get it, have it." So I want to use it because I can. If we're, when we're done having kids. But yeah, she had said, I like the name Brooke. So I was like, me too. And then we kind of agreed like early on to that our uh, boy middle names would be like his family names and then like girl middle names could be my family names. But um, so that's obviously where John came from. Um, since he's the third, we weren't going to do four. So we thought John would be a cute middle name. Yeah, I am the third. So we didn't want to. I wanted the pay tribute to like my grandpa and my dad and I mean myself too yeah. and carry some sort of name and so that was really important to me and I I've like I've told her like I'm super appreciative of of her allowing me to like carry on the name because it does mean a lot to me so yeah Brooks John is perfect I think it's the perfect name for him I think it fits really well and I couldn't imagine it, it being anything else I do think it's rare though that you like pick out a name so early on and we kept we never strayed from it yeah we literally agreed on that name when we were dating and yeah 2021 mm -hmm. and we still both. i feel like a lot of people pick a name and then they talk about it so much or whatever that they end up not liking it yeah and we have other boy names but we always knew you like brooks would be our first boy if yeah. we had a boy so as soon as as soon as we um knew it was a boy obviously we knew um what his name was 
And then this kind of goes along with it. Did you guys keep his name a surprise from family or did you tell them right away? We definitely told our parents. I think we told them like even before it, we found out if it was a boy or Oh, yeah. We're like, this is our boy name for sure. This will be our boy name. And then we were still undecided on a girl name. But yeah, we did. I did. Correct. I don't think I told a bunch of friends, though. Like towards the end of my pregnancy, we started telling some friends, but definitely not early on. Yeah. It wasn't even that like I wanted it to be a complete surprise. It was just kind of like I don't really want your input on if you like the name or not. Where I don't think people would have, but yeah. some people I would be like, there's and like it's this sucks saying it, but like there's always a chance that something can happen. So like I even tried not to use the name that much before he actually was delivered. Yeah, because like emotional, yeah, passion and stuff. So because you just never you never know. Never know. You don't want to like get too far ahead of yourself. So. Yeah. Well, and especially for us, like, we didn't want to spoil the name on social media. So, like, in all my filming stuff, I would just say baby. And so, like, we didn't really say his name a ton before. Yeah. Even, even just us two, we didn't say his name a ton. Yeah, we would just say, like, baby. baby. Can you talk about your journey from being scared, surprised at first by your pregnancy to the part of enjoying and being excited for baby Brooks? I'm at a stage of life where I'm terrified to get pregnant because I don't feel ready. Yeah, I feel like... When we first found out, we were so shocked and, and so just like, what is happening? This was not what we planned, but I feel like it was a pretty quick, it didn't take me long. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, you know what? This was God's plan for us and it's supposed to happen. And so I'm going to be excited about it. Yeah. I don't know. I have only like a few days. I feel like it's like for me to yeah. go like, okay, let's do that. We were kind of like, are you okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. well, and okay, so we got pregnant in November of 22. We were kind of like our plan was to start trying in January of 2024. So that does seem kind of far, but like by the time he's born, like he was just born in August. Yeah. So I was like, that's not that far off from us like trying for a baby. I don't know. It wasn't like we were going to wait five years or something. Yeah. So we did have, we did want to wait. There were some, that would, that would be what I would answer to the first question. If you could go back and tell yourself anything. Go to Europe. Yeah, this was, summer, like this summer we actually like did. right now we were supposed to be in Europe. Like I was planning a trip, Italy, France. I don't want to talk about it. That trip obviously had to get canceled. Um, that's what I would tell ourselves. Go to yeah, Europe. That's really the only thing, like major thing we have. To yeah, and yeah. I'm saying I would say that I mean, we were talking about this before. At least, um, obviously, I'm a man and I don't have to get pregnant. But I would say that even um, you would agree with this, like. You'll, you're never going to be probably 100% ready yeah. to have kids. At least when you're younger, maybe if you're in your 30s or something, you'll finally get a point where you're like, I'm 100% ready. But I really don't think there's a lot of decisions in life that you're going to be 100% ready to yeah. do because there's the unknowing of it. There's the pros and the cons of everything. So it's just like... I always tell our friends and stuff, like at least for us, I think it was better that we got pregnant unexpectedly. I feel like we would have always been like, like, one of us is like, okay, let's do it. And the other is like, no, no, no. Like, we yeah. So, like, it's one of those things that you never really feel ready. And then when it happens, you're like, okay, I'm ready now. Well, you, you got to get ready. Right yeah. yeah. So, that's what I would say is if you're scared, that's totally normal. But when it happens, like, there's nothing to do but get ready. So, you just get ready. And that's just, yeah. like, you get excited for it. What is something you didn't expect about having a newborn? I guess, to be honest, I didn't realize how often they have to wake up in the middle of the night. <laughs> like I kind of thought he would at least sleep for like five to six hours straight. I knew she wasn't gonna sleep for like nine hours at a time, but I didn't realize how little of increments they sleep in. Like three to four hours is all. That's like the yeah, max. max. I mean, some people have newborns that sleep for the night, which is crazy. We did not have one of those. No, <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, I guess that kind of goes in with the next question: How is Brooks sleeping at night? Oh. Um, he goes to bed, I'd say anywhere from 9.30 to 11, like sometime in that frame. And he usually, typically, will sleep for at least three and a half to four hours for his first wake up. Then I'll feed him. And then he only sleeps for like two to three hours. And then he's up again. Yeah. Um, the other night he went to bed around like 10 30 woke up at three and then woke up at like 7 30 that was like my ideal i wish every night really yeah i would say that like the main problem we're having with him so far is sleeping is he likes sleeping when he or i would say he likes sleeping during the day 
But when he does get to sleep during the day, it's a much deeper, wants to be a longer nap. Yeah. So we're still trying to get him like, no, this is daytime, quicker naps, you know, more awake hours. And then, oh no, this is nighttime. Let's stay asleep longer so mommy and daddy can sleep. But And there's so many things. Like, this is how you get your baby to know, like, this is daytime, this is nighttime. I've done it all. I'm trying everything. Yeah. A lot of people so, asked about the sleep and if we're on schedules yet. We are not on schedules. It's... Well, it, it, he does always go to bed between 9.30. All right. I think it's because go to bed, but... Well, yeah. Yeah. But... Other than that, there's not... He doesn't wake up at the same time, usually, or... Oh. Sometimes okay. there's one wake up. Sometimes there's two. Sometimes he goes to bed right after he's fed at night. Sometimes it takes an hour to get up, so... Sometimes we're up in the night for, like, only 30 minutes. Sometimes the other night it was, like, an hour 45. So it really just depends right now. Another thing I didn't expect about having a newborn, like those first like two weeks, I can barely take care of myself. So I'm like, how do I have to take care of a little baby too? Our whole plan, like our plan, the whole pregnancy was to spend like the first couple weeks just as us three. It's like it worked out really well that we had family in town yeah. because I was in so much pain and like literally couldn't even sit up out of bed or like out of a chair by myself. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a question that I didn't end up getting um put in but like as far as like accepting help we did not expect to need as much help in the beginning as we did but because brooks went late and my parents were already like flights coming like they had to come and they ended up being here when he was born and it ended up being a massive help because we needed a lot more help at the beginning that yeah we thought we well and like every one's body is going to react differently like to after having a baby some people are totally fine after some people aren't fine for like three weeks so i didn't really know how it'd be but i thought i'd be fine pretty quick and that just wasn't the case i was having migraines for like a week after and so it was really nice having people here what is something you wish you knew about labor and postpartum beforehand i'm due next month with little boy i guess i kind of just answered that you did that you didn't know how your body was gonna yeah and like it was honestly a lot harder than i thought also i didn't no one ever talks about really the side effects to an epidural. I feel like the only thing you really hear is like, oh, if you get an epidural, you shouldn't feel any like fever or anything. That's what everyone talks about. Like most of the women that I know that had babies hadn't had an epidural. So I didn't really like have people to ask like, you what should I expect? Like your mom had one? But that was Did she? 20 some years ago. Yeah, really the only person was like one of my friends in March, but still it's like everyone's bodies are so different i feel like you've ever hear about that so definitely look into the side effects if you're planning on getting one not to scare yourself but just so you're kind of aware like okay this is possibility you would still do it again not an epidural yeah i would have to yeah i don't think i need to do it without no, definitely not. Right. so this kind of goes along with it how was the epidural do you very soon curious um yeah i think no, it was on my channel that I said. I always get confused on like what videos I'm saying what. Um, I think that there was a little complication or something when they put mine in, but I go way into more detail on the video on my channel. I'm not that's like a long story. So I was truly really expecting all of the side effects after, but like I said, I think that's because of the complication. But after I got it, and yeah, it was amazing. I couldn't feel any contractions, which before I got it, I was like crying. They were hurting so bad. And I couldn't feel any pain. I didn't feel that I tore. I didn't feel them doing the stitches or anything. It definitely worked. And I'll have to get one for the other baby. If you ask me, how is the epidural? I would say expensive. <laughs> That's what I would say about the epidural. That's true. <laughs> expensive. So be prepared for that. I know some people talk about like not getting the epidural too early because then it will like run out or something. I don't know if it's just my hospital or like the kind that I had, but mine, it's like once you get it, you have it until you don't want to have it anymore. So obviously after he was born, that's when they like stopped it. So if you're kind of curious about that, maybe ask your doctor, like if it's going to be the kind that runs out so that you know when to get it or not. Because I was thinking, oh, I don't know like get it too early i don't want it to run out before he's born it wasn't that case for mine what was your most favorite thing and least favorite thing about your pregnancy most favorite thing was i guess just like getting to grow our baby and all the like pictures of my bunk i yeah. think is a very easy prop to have in those and i think like looking back all the photos were super cute just being pregnant and stuff um another favorite thing you were a very cute pregnant lady thank you Another favorite thing is that my 
acne like completely cleared up when I was pregnant. That was amazing. Uh, least favorite thing? It is honestly pretty hard to see your body like go through so many changes and none of your clothes fit. That wasn't fun. I feel like that was like uh, it was especially in like India wear anything. Yeah, like I'm wearing the same athleisure every day. Yeah, like that was like uh, you're someone who wants to you know, wear your outfits and put cute fits together. Yeah. And unless you want to go buy a whole new wardrobe every two weeks because of your chain of thought. Right, like my body machining so quick, it's not like that would have been stupid and get on us. So yeah, that was pretty hard. Um, another least favorite thing was just like some of the pregnancy, I don't want to say like side effects, but the symptoms, I guess. I don't know. Just like shortness of breath and yeah, you were not sleeping well. No, I wasn't sleeping well. Having to wake up all night to pee all the time. <laughs> like, my lower back was just hurting. There was, like, a lot of things. All right, this next question. I feel like you talked about this, obviously, a lot. Like, probably on all platforms. But how did you uh, prepare your body for birth? Uh, well, I tried to do a lot of things to especially prevent tearing. Um, I ate dates for, like, probably since, like, 37 weeks on every day I was eating those. I did the like raspberry leaf tea Argentine that every single day. I don't do those. I know. Because those two are supposed to like soften your cervix, help you not tear. I don't know if it actually, like maybe I would have tore way worse if I didn't do those things. I'm not sure. Um, And then there's just like some stretches and like herb walking and everything that you can do to kind of just like get your body ready, I guess. Open your cervix a little bit. Those are some things I was doing. Just like really trying to stay active and like keep walking a lot of water yeah lots of walks i know that like if you're not really active especially at the end of your pregnancy like your body's just so stiff and like that's not really good for labor you did like those 30 minute like holding positions yeah lots of stretching you did a lot you could thanks i feel like we've already talked about this but just like overall how has the recovery process been um yeah first i don't know you think two two and a half weeks yeah like for it too rough it was a struggle just like obviously bleeding and the migraines were really really bad that was like basically the gist of it yeah it was just like oh my back you oh yeah it's yeah. i mean giving birth I, it's like getting hit by a car you know like yeah. it's, it's a traumatic thing your body does to shove a baby out so my lower back was hurting so bad where i got the epidural that was not fun even like still i think just randomly i would get like a shot of pain where I got it and then it like goes away. I don't know if that's normal. <laughs> I'm just hoping that it goes away like completely. But I think now I'm definitely like getting back into feeling myself. Now I'm just like, I wanted to swim in. I want to go. I would say week like three was like a big like turn of the tide. Like you felt much more comfortable like being up and, and cooking and, and getting cleaned down and, yeah. or, and working, doing some of that where it's like before like it was even headache was so bad, couldn't even like get on your phone. Or, like, yeah. Like, that. like it was like, I know, some days I would literally just be, like, laying down on the couch all day or in our bed and all day. That was rough. It was rough. Yeah. yeah. It's not It's not easy, but it does get better. How did you deal, again, I think this is pretty similar. How did you deal with pregnancy anxiety? So I think you kind of already talked about that, but yeah, just positive thoughts and yeah. brain and stuff like that. I'm not, like, luckily, I'm not really someone who struggles with anxiety a ton, so... I feel like any time I even had an anxious thought, I would just try to like, be like, no, that's not coming often. Everything's fine. I think almost now I have more anxiety now. Like when he's sleeping, I will be like, is he breathing? Like, like one day I was laying in bed. You weren't even in bed yet. You were like out watching comparison thing. And I was like dead asleep. And I woke up and I was like, Brooks isn't breathing. Like, I know he's not breathing right now. And I like had to go check on him. And he was totally fine. I don't know. You get nervous. He's a little baby. Yeah. No, at the hospital, I was just like constantly looking up. I feel like once we got home after the first couple of nights, I'm like, he's a human. He's going to be able to breathe on his own. But definitely those first couple of nights, I was just like, and I like to put my fingers by his head to see if I felt anything. Even now, like sometimes if I wake up in the middle of the night, I will like sit up in bed and then like try to listen for him. Luckily, he's a snorer, so we can free him. Yeah. That's, I'll like listen until I like, can hear him. I'm like, okay, we're good. We're good. This one's about maybe. How has Maple adjusted to being our queen? Yeah. A big sister. She's good. I think definitely at first when we brought him home, she was like super curious and just like, who is Bootsy? Yeah. And then she went through a period where she likes when the attention's on her. And so a lot of the attention is not on her right now. Typical doodle. Yeah. And she did not like that. 
she was just like it kind of pouting me inside and she still does kind of but yeah she right now is like definitely acknowledging him way more she will like lick him like try to lick his feet and stuff if he's crying she like goes over there yeah i would say she she likes him a lot like if we're on walk she's always trying to be up by the stroller like, she wants to be by the shoulder so bad and like looking at him we can tell she she likes him a lot and she feels comfortable with him but she is used to being like all attention on her yeah and so like now when it's like nighttime after uh we finally get brooks to bed she'll like crawl over both of us and just like sprawl like, out lay like over our lap. normally at nighttime sometimes obviously she would do that and cuddle but sometimes she would like to go out and just kind of sleep by herself but now she wants to be like all over us at all times yeah i feel like she's definitely been up my butt way more so much she is like up your butt yeah like you, because you can't really do a ton for her right now as far yeah. as like because you're nursing so much but yeah overall i would say she's doing really good um yeah i think once brooks can play with her and and you know like rough house, a bit of all yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Like she will think that's way more fun. Right now, she yeah. just is like, "Why is he crying?" And we were in the process of finishing up our backyard, so she wasn't allowed in the backyard. We weren't going on that many walks because newborn baby. Now the backyard's done. We can get her back there. I feel the tennis ball. It's a lot better now. Yeah, you know, I feel like it will continually get better. Did you tell your family when you were going into labor? If no, how'd you go about it? I deliver in November, and my spouse and I are both very close with our families, but also know how stressful it is and what my spouse is focused to be on baby and I not having to update family on status of baby arrival. And when my water broke, we called both of our um, moms to tell them like, hey, my water broke, we're going to the hospital. And then just kind of like sent little updates when we were at the hospital. But then that's when your peers got here. Like that day when like we were at the hospital. You know, you know, why? We have someone doing donuts in front of our house. Oh, absolutely not. Dude, there are some losers out here. Dude, they just marked up the whole street. Like, you guys didn't see that, like, straight smoke cloud. Oh, I've never smoke. I didn't see the mark from the road. That's so rude. Yeah. And there was cars waiting, too. I know. And it was, that was insane. I feel like a real parent where I'm like, those kids, <laughs> get off my yard. They really don't like it. was right in front of our house. Right. So his parents obviously definitely knew we were at the hospital and labor and my mom knew. Other than that, no, no one else knew. And both of our moms kind of knew like not to reach out to us. Like you would reach out to them yeah. and be like, this is what's going on. Yeah, so that's fine. I think like both only people we told our parents got the gist of like what this was. So like if you, I know there's definitely parents out there that are maybe a little bit too involved or kind of more think it's like about them. Like just sit them down and be like, listen, love you. This is about us. This is about us having our baby. We'll tell you when we tell you. This is about us starting our family. Yeah. It's not about you right now. And if they're not okay with it, well, they need to get with it. Your parents got to understand that this is not their show. It's your show. You'll let them know when you can let them know. But just don't worry about them right now. Focus on you guys. Focus on making sure this baby's getting out healthy. And then you can let whoever you need to let. Yeah. Well, and what we did is, like, after she was born, then we, like, called all the rest of our family and, like, siblings and stuff, like, FaceTimed. And that was super fun. Yeah. Ah, surprise. That made it more fun because they were just like, thought a normal day was going on forever. Right. And exactly. Oh, we'd actually be at the hospital for 24 hours. Yeah. And also I was going to say, if you do not want people in the delivery room, like just say that. I feel like I know some people who are like, well, I'm afraid to tell my mom, like I don't want her in there. Just say, hey, I just want to eat us in the delivery room. Because especially now, like, Looking back, that was just such a very intimate moment and where it's like you don't want a ton of people in there unless you really do want your mom or like your parents, whatever. That's totally fine. I'm just saying if you don't, don't be afraid to tell them. If you want people there or some people there, have them there. If you don't, make that known. And if they have a problem with that, that's what it is. It's their problem, not your problem. Like don't try to people please because it's a very... I mean, obviously, your legs are spread wide open, but not even that. It's just like... We're meeting our son for the first time. Yeah. Like, I didn't want a ton of people there. It's like, it takes two people to make a baby, yeah. and that's it. And God, obviously, but, like, those two people are what's important for like, what's going on. Like, you guys can meet the baby after. And it doesn't have to be the delivery room. Speaking of delivery, someone wanted to know, uh, Johnny, what was your POV like during the delivery? 
I wish you were wearing like a GoPro. We could see your POV. Oh man, I remember it like very vividly, but it also doesn't feel real. Like it didn't feel real. I was not planning on being right there and watching it. I didn't think I would do well with it. And so I was like, I'm just going to hold back, be by her head, support her. And then the doctor was just like, grab her leg. And I was like, okay. So I grabbed her leg. He never had any other like nurse come in and like do that. Yeah. So pretty much from when you started pushing, I had your leg the entire time, which obviously means my head was right there. And then at that point I was, it's kind of like that thing where it's like, you can't not look at it. Like a car crash. It's a car crash. You, you, you don't. You know, you shouldn't look. Yeah. You just have to. So I will say it was, I'm very glad I watched it. It was very beautiful. Um, it wasn't as graphic as I thought it was going to be. It was weird to see. Yeah, like, I can't even imagine. Just like the head come out like kind of disproportioned. I thought he just had a really small head because what I what I didn't understand about labor is it's it's a constant like this, right? Yeah. It's it's a constant out then back in. I out really then back in. in. I thought it was just Very steadily cool. like yeah. moving. But it's basically the body getting ready. So it was weird to see his head start to come out during contractions and then back in. And I just thought his head was that small. But in reality, it was the little cone on his head that was coming out. And then eventually the rest of his head popped down. And it was like head, that little cone like that. And I was like, yeah. oh, that is way different than I thought. I got to cut the umbilical cord, which was cool. It was very special. It was very emotional. I was very tired. Um, obviously not as tired as you. But yeah, I, it had it been a very it doesn't even feel real. It was a it was a very long day, lots of emotions. It was cool. I will say. I feel like I don't know when I was over. I was sort of like, I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, that's so bizarre. Yeah, I've had a baby. Thing. <laughs> it was a lot with the blood and and just there's a lot that goes on down there during it all. Ugh. Um, nah. I handled it pretty well. I thought so. Yeah, you did. Probably both of us. I would have thrown up. Yeah, I thought I would. Johnny, what is it like watching Cass become a mom? It has been awesome. I think that we both, when we had started dating, we already were talking about, I mean, I've, I've seen conversations in our text messages even before we officially started dating being like, I can't wait to see you become a mom or I can't wait to see you become a dad. Like, I feel like we always saw each other as this is one main reason why I want to marry this person is because I want to have kids with this person and I want to see that in that role. So seeing Cass like become a mom, like she has done so well with the breastfeeding and the waking up at night and, and the taking care of him. And she's so sweet and so gentle with him and she's doing such a good job yeah and it's been it's been really special to see because it's like i think people talk about the love that you have for your baby when you meet them the first time which is like that is an incredible love and it's something you can't explain but no one really talks about the love that you like grow for your spouse when you see that happen dude like that's my girl like she pushed out half of me half of you and like she did such a good job the whole pregnancy it's been amazing i think it's helped our relationship. That's what the th that's what I would say when people are like, how has your relationship been? I think it's way better now because I literally love you so much more. And I didn't think that was possible because again, like you said, like I really do. We have a good relationship. Like we yeah. communicate well. Like I truly enjoy being married to you and seeing you become a mom. It's like so much better. Yeah, it really is. It's been really fun. It adds like a whole other dynamic kind of. And like, because now it's like we're teammates, you know? Yeah. And like we are, we were before, obviously, but it's like this dude can't survive without us. Yeah. So, like, let's work together. Yeah. And still make it enjoyable. And that's been really a little like opposite. But I feel like you have heard this saying that's like um, the best thing you can give your kid is a healthy marriage. And I feel like that is so true. So, like, if you are having problems with your spouse, that really should come before, like, not before your baby, but, like, you do need to figure that out. Because if you're not having a healthy marriage, like, your baby's not going to have a great time either. Yeah. I feel like a marriage is, like, the foundation of the family. Yeah. And so if that is, like, a little bit off or broken, then, like, the whole family dynamic's going to yeah. be off. I think kids can either help a marriage or hurt a marriage. And I think one reason why it hurts a marriage is people put the baby above their spouse. And it's, or like, in between them. It's, like, you... A baby's going to need more time than your spouse, but that doesn't mean that you don't need to put, like, your spouse's, like, yeah. stuff first. Because, like, we're, we talk to each other, like, first thing in the morning, how are you? Like, how'd you sleep? Do you need anything, like, extra for me today? Um, Like, what can I do? What does your schedule look like? What does um, my schedule look like? How can we help each other out during this, like, different things? So it's definitely important that we don't lose our, the specialness of, that's not even a word, the, 
the importance of our relationship. Yeah. And I think that's where possibly a lot of marriages do go wrong once they have kids is, yeah, it's now my child's first. I forget about my spouse's needs and then they get upset that their needs are being taken care of. So then they're not going to fulfill the needs of their spouse. And then it just goes back and forth until no one's doing anything. So yeah. Take care of your spouse and it will all work out. Yeah. A lot of people asked about my hat in that post our first post my boy dad hat wait then it's it was from barstool sports it's not on there anymore i get um, like once a day on my facebook you were like where's hat? it's funny because you guys if you guys followed us you guys knew that we thought it was a girl yeah and i saw these girl dad hats in marshall sports i was like i'm gonna be a girl dad yeah like just try to get into it and then i uh, obviously found out we were having a boy and i saw the boy dad hat and i was like all right now i'm a boy dad let's go like i want that hat and then um, i wasn't just gonna like buy it for myself and so i told Cass about it and then i was so upset because it got taken off the website they must have either sold out or whatever and i when my mom get it for me for father's day or something your birthday my birthday so i ended up getting it but it was it's been gone it like two months in advance because i sent it to her i was like get Johnny this hat for his birthday it's been gone a couple months but the podcast that it came from is Son of a Boy Dad. So if you guys, not from you, email them, DM them. Maybe they'll put them back on the site. I don't know. But last question. This was, again, for me. How do I feel in terms of bonding with the baby while you were pregnant versus once he was actually born? Is it true that men don't truly bond with the baby until um, they're born? I don't know if it's like the signs of all that. I do feel like the pregnancy felt more real to you than me. And like we talked about that is like, yes, I see your stomach getting bigger. I can feel him kick. I can see that you're pregnant, but it is so sometimes unless he's actually you. I feel like I did a lot of things to try and bond with him in a way. I don't know. They say that he, they can hear in there and they, so I, I, I would do all that. I would talk. Yeah. I would sing. I would read, read. I would try to interact. It is interesting when they're a newborn. As a dad, I can't nurse him, right? So that like intimate thing right there, I can't do the thing that's feeding him, that's giving him life. So I still think it's it's definitely more of they're going to have a shot or bond with the mother in the beginning. You just have to be okay with that, but then also not like give up. And you got to be, all right, if I can't nurse him, I'm going to change his diapers. You know, I'm going to... Um, be the one that tries to put him to sleep. I'm going to be the one in charge of changing him or like whatever. And every dad's schedule is different, but like you got to be doing the other stuff to try to be like creating a, a rapport with them and, and try to just be like, oh, you can get used. yeah, get used to me. I'm here. I'm your dad. I got you. And so I feel like once he gets older and continues to be like knowing of, of who I am, like as his dad, then like obviously we'll be able to connect more and grow. But like, I do feel connected to him. Like I do feel like, oh, this is my son. And I haven't had like any struggle with like not feeling like he's my kid or like that not feeling a connection with him. Like, I do feel a connection, but I mean, he's also a newborn baby and there's, mm -hmm. he doesn't really have uh, too much of a personality yet. So there's like, there's only so much you can connect with someone who yeah. can't talk and can, doesn't really react to anything you do. Like I can do anything to him. He's just going to be pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Unless it's just him. I know some babies like, I feel like some babies like laugh and son yeah. a lot more. Yeah. I mean, when he gets older, but... He's just a serious right kid. Now, yeah. But he's like, serious baby. Be me, change my diaper. Well, and I was going to say, too, it's like, when your baby's in you, like, they can hear your heartbeat, and so then when they're on the outside of you, they like being on the mom here, so they can still hear that, and that's, like, comforting. So I feel like if they're, like, laying on someone else, and it's, like, not what they're used to, he kind of, like, could, like, freak out a little yeah. bit. Not always, but... Yeah. I feel like in the beginning, mm -hmm. he would kind of do that more but now we're pretty good like if we're just trying to rinse him off not do like a full bath time like i'll take him in the shower and, and rinse him off and he does really good on there with me he loves that um if we have him strapped to me if i'm doing stuff around the house or whatever um he falls asleep pretty well in that so i i would say me and him are connecting really well i would say as like a dad you just can't like get frustrated because it's like obviously when they're a baby like they're gonna have more of a connection to the thing that kept them alive and is keeping them alive. You can't get butt hurt about that. And you can't like yeah. give up on that because there's things you can do now that will help you be connected with them like later on. I'm happy yeah. with our connection we've built and 
my damn limits, I can play with them and, and, and do that kind of stuff. I, I think we'll have a really special relationship. But other than that, I think that is all the questions. Actually, that's not all the questions. There was a lot of questions. That's all the questions that we could include. Sorry if we didn't hit your questions. They will do this again. We try to cover as much as possible. We appreciate all you guys for your support. The YouTube channel has been doing really good lately, and we appreciate that, and we love putting out content for our YouTube family. I feel like that's something that we really like doing, and it's a different type of content yeah. than just like Instagram or TikTok, and we really do enjoy being able to make um, vlogs or, or travel vlogs or, or answering you guys Q and A's. I feel like YouTube's a really uh, cool spot that we can put more long form stuff out there and be able to connect with you guys and you guys be able to connect with us and see who we are as, as people and like as a family and stuff. So we'll continue to be making content and we appreciate you guys. If you have to subscribe, make sure you subscribe. If you are a girl more curious about like the pregnancy side effects or the whole pregnancy basically, I do have um, first, second, and third trimester recaps on my channel. Where I'll link that. I'll link that in the description. The depth and detail about all that stuff. So um, those always those too. Subscribe, like, comment, follow us on the Grammy on the TikTok, and until next time, we'll see you later. Peace out. Bye.